very, very good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minton. It's 8 o'clock and these are your Monday morning headlines. 20,000 ex-NHS staff return to the service to help fight coronavirus. The figure is revealed by the Prime Minister in a message recorded from isolation. The one thing I think coronavirus crisis has already proved is that there really is such a thing as society. His comments come as England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer warns it could be at least six months before life in the UK returns to normal. A breathing aid that can help keep coronavirus patients out of intensive care has been created in less than seven days. It's expected to go into production next week. Good morning. EasyJet grounds its entire fleet of planes. The airline says travel restrictions across Europe mean it's no longer viable to fly any commercial aircraft. They say there's no certainty when they'll restart. Making a difference in a world without football. Manchester United and England forward Marcus Rashford talks to us about protecting children on free school meals during the coronavirus crisis. Good morning, it's Monday the 30th of March. Let's start with our top story. And 20,000 former NHS staff have returned to work to help the fight against coronavirus. This is according to the Prime Minister. Boris Johnson, who's self-isolating after contracting the virus, made the announcement in a video online. It comes after one of the government's top medical advisers warned it could be at least six months until life in the UK returns to normal. Rich Preston reports. It's been a week since Boris Johnson first said life in the UK would have to be severely restricted. But the message from England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer at Sunday's Downing Street press briefing was clear. We need to keep that lid on and then gradually we will be able to hopefully adjust some of the social distancing measures and gradually get it all back to normal. So I think three weeks for review, uh, two or three months to see whether we've really squashed it. Um, but about three to six months, uh, ideally, and lots of uncertainty in that. Tweeting from isolation after testing positive for the virus, Boris Johnson said the policy was still to delay the spread of the disease and to reduce the strain on the NHS. We are going to do it. We are going to, to do it together. One thing I think coronavirus crisis has already proved is that there really is such a thing as society. The UK coronavirus death toll passed 1,000 over the weekend. On Sunday, it was announced that 209 people in the UK had died in a single 24-hour period. The UK government has promised to ramp up virus testing in the UK, particularly amongst NHS staff, amid pressure to ensure adequate protective equipment for those on the front line. Downing Street says measures are in place to keep supplies going for the NHS using the armed forces when needed. The Scottish government says it's delivered 34 million items of protective equipment to hospitals across the country, and eight weeks worth are going to be delivered up front to GP surgeries this week. 750,000 people have volunteered to help the NHS during the coronavirus pandemic, and 20,000 former NHS staff have returned to work. Work's continuing on the temporary NHS Nightingale Hospital at London's Excel Centre and news that EasyJet and Virgin have written to some of their staff to ask them to work at the medical facility. With hundreds of flights cancelled, the airlines say their staff can provide vital, non-clinical help to hard-pressed NHS staff. Rich Preston, BBC News. And we'll be talking about that particular point actually in about 10 minutes here on Breakfast. Also, in the last half an hour, the Care Minister, Helen Waitley, told us the government was working hard to address the supply issues with protective equipment. Over the last two weeks, 117 million items of PPE went out across the NHS and social care. Every hospital, every GP provider to all registered care providers, including over 25 million masks. So huge efforts been going out. It's a logistical exercise to get the stocks to the front line when there's suddenly been a huge call for that equipment. And yes, I know that people want to have very clear guidelines on when they should be using PPE and what. So we're looking again to make sure those guidelines are clear enough. Well, our political correspondent Jessica Parker is in Westminster for us now. I was listening to that as well a little bit earlier on, speaking to the Care Minister. Uh, good morning to you, Jessica. So it, there are big demands on the government at the moment, aren't there? Particularly about um, testing, particularly about pr personal protective equipment. Um, what do, the impact on the government's response at the moment with the Prime Minister 
tweeting and sending out videos from isolation. There's no uh, health secretary, Matt Hancock's also in isolation as well. And so too, Professor Chris Whitty. So, you know, the, the big hitters in, in government at the moment are currently out of, the, out of the equation. Is that having a big impact? Well, I think they may dispute whether they're completely out of the equation. Obviously, we saw this video from uh, Boris Johnson yesterday. He posted it from self-isolation from his flat uh, in Downing Street. I think purposely uh, dressed up in a suit and tie. Yes, his voice was a little bit hoarse, it seemed, but I think he was trying to suggest that he is still uh, coordinating uh, the government's efforts from self-isolation. We saw pictures of the weekend as well, him uh, chairing government meetings uh, remotely. But obviously, as you say, with three very, very senior figures, including the prime minister in self-isolation, even if they are working from home, there will be concerns about what impact that could have. Now, We'll have the daily press briefing again uh, later today. Obviously, the Prime Minister very unlikely to take that. We've seen a number of senior ministers step up to take that instead over recent days as well. So I think that will continue. You rightly isolate as well, I think, two issues that the government is going to be under considerable scrutiny for this week. Testing. Michael Gove yesterday, the Cabinet Office Minister, saying they're ramping up testing, absolutely prioritising frontline staff, NHS workers, social care workers, the government has faced questions as to whether it has produced enough tests for those people and more broadly, and as well that personal protective uh, equipment for those frontline workers that Helen Wakeley, the social care minister, uh, was talking about just a moment ago on BBC uh, Breakfast. And then the other thing we're going to see over the next couple of days, of course, uh, Boris Johnson's letter uh, that he has penned to households across the country going to be landing on doormats where he does warn quite starkly that things will get worse before they get better and talks about the possibility of further restrictions if the government thinks that's necessary. And one of the other big takeaways from the weekend was the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Jenny Harris, talking about the possibility of life not really re returning to normal for three up to six months. Now, she said that it was a bit of a, a movable feast, that it wasn't a set timeline. It depends on our behaviour, but you could see measures gradually relaxed, adjusted over that time period but I think the clear message was that social distancing measures restrictions they could be with us for some time yet. Okay thank you very much much to digest this morning. Um, in other news a breathing aid that can help keep coronavirus patients out of intensive care has been created in just